Okay, it's proof time. So let's remember what we're trying to prove. Let A be an n by n square matrix with eigenvalues lambda one, lambda two, dot, 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 lambda k. The A's are the algebraic multiplicities. The G's are the geometric multiplicities. So that means GI is the dimension of the lambda i eigenspace. And we had three theorems. Theorem one gave us a criterion for when there was an eigenbasis in terms of the G's. There's an eigenbasis if and only if the sum of the G's adds up to N. Theorem two says, well, the A's are a little easier to understand than the G's and there's a relation between them. The G's are less than or equal to the A's. And then theorem three says, all right, we can understand when the A's add up to N, the A's add up to N, if and only if our determinant factor is completely into linear terms. So our goal for today is to prove these theorems. Now, I told the story of these theorems in an order that I think M explains why they matter. Theorem one is a criterion for when we have an eigenbasis, something we care about. And theorem two and theorem three says how this sum GI equals N criterion is related to these other algebraic multiplicities, which are a bit easier to compute than the geometric ones. But when I actually prove it, I'm going to go in reverse order. So this video is going to be kind of like memento, but hopefully a little less confusing. So theorem three. OK, so we have, so what we want to show is that the algebraic multiplicities add up to at most n, and they add up to exactly n if and only if the characteristic polynomial factors into linear terms. Well, what the algebraic multiplicities mean by definition is they have a number of times the factor lambda i minus t shows up when you factorize the characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial is the product lambda i minus t to the ai. And maybe there might be some leftover factor, which would be some polynomial with no roots. So for example, we saw a matrix whose characteristic polynomial was t squared plus two t squared plus two doesn't have any roots, or at least doesn't have any real roots. So there were no eigenvalues. So that would be this leftover term here. And so if we look at the degrees of both sides of this equation, we see that the degree of the characteristic polynomial is n, and the degree of this right-hand side is the sum of the ai, okay? uh, plus whatever the degree of this thing is. So this is the degree of this, this is the degree of this. And so n is greater than or equal to ai. When do we have equality? We have equality when there isn't any extra term left over. Average determinant is just the product of linear terms. And that's what we're supposed to show. QED. Um, I'm going to keep going after each proof, but I would encourage you, pause the video, stretch, sit back, enjoy the feeling of a proof. Um, you should, it, it takes some time to sit and think and process stuff like this. But next theorem. Theorem two, each geometric multiplicity is bounded above by the corresponding algebraic multiplicity. So I'll drop the subscript I so it is less to write. So let's write lambda, G and A. Here, let V1 through Vj be a basis for the lambda eigenspace. We want to show that the characteristic polynomial is divisible by at least G factors of lambda minus T. Maybe even more, but at least that many. Well, let's compute V1, Vg to some basis for Rn. So we're just going to find N minus G additional basis vectors so we can start with these g vectors that are a basis for the lambda eigenspace, add n minus g more to make a basis for all of our n. And now we're going to write our matrix A in the coordinates of that basis. And what it's going to look like is in the first g columns, so that's g columns here, We're just going to see lambda times the identity matrix and a bunch of zeros down here. Uh, this rectangle is meant to indicate a big rectangle, lots of zeros, zero, 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 zero. 
Um, so why is that? Well, a of v1 is lambda v1, and that is why this column looks like this. Because the first column tells me what happens to my first basis vector. Similarly, A of V2 is lambda V2. And that looks like this. And keeping going this way, we see that the first G columns are going to just be lambdas in this square G by G block here and zeros down below. And then we really know basically nothing about what happened to these other two blocks. So I just put big question marks to remind us we really have no idea what's going to happen there. Okay. So when we take a minus t times the identity, in this first block here, we're going to see lambda minus t, lambda minus t, dot, 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 lambda minus t. And then down here, we're going to see c minus t times a smaller identity matrix. When we take a determinant of that, from this block here, we're going to get g factors of lambda minus t. And then what's left over is going to be the characteristic polynomial of this leftover matrix c in the bottom right corner. And as I said in a previous slide, we had that big question mark. We really know nothing about the matrix C. So maybe lambda minus T will be a factor of this another time. Maybe it won't. We don't know. But we at least have lambda minus, have G factors of lambda minus T coming from here. So we have at least G factors of lambda minus t. So we have shown that g is less than or equal to a like we wanted. OK, again, pause, saver, time for theorem 3. OK, last goal, the sum of the geometric multiplicities is n if and only if a has an eigenbasis. So first of all, let's assume that there is an eigenbasis and we'll show that the sum of the GIs is N. So assuming, so let's suppose that A has an eigenbasis, X1, X2, dot, 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 Xn. For each lambda I, let HI be the number of XI, which are lambda I eigenvectors. I shouldn't have made that subscript an I there. Um, just the number of Xs, which are lambda I eigenvectors. So each one of the x's is an eigenvector for some eigenvalue, and we're just going to count up how many of them are eigenvectors for each particular eigenvalue. And so each one of these will be an eigenvector for one of those eigenvalues. And so when we add up over all i, there are n vectors here total, so n will be the sum of the hi's. So maybe there'll be two of them with eigenvalue lambda one and three of them with eigenvalue lambda two and five with eigenvalue lambda three. And when we add up the count over all eigenvalues, we'll get n. Now the lambda i eigenvalues are contained in the lambda i eigenspace. And they're supposed to be linearly independent. They're a subset of a basis. So the number of them is at most the dimension of the lambda i eigenspace. So each hi is at most gi. And we see that n is the sum of the hi is at most the sum of the gi. But we also already noted that the sum of the gi is less than or equal to the sum of the ai is less than or equal to n. So this over here is theorem 2. And this over here is 
is theorem three. So here we have that n is less than or equal to the sum of a gi, and here we have that the sum of a gi is less than or equal to n, putting it all together, the sum of a gi must be n. Okay, finally, the hardest part, we're going to assume that the sum of a gi is n, and we are going to prove that there is an eigenbasis. Okay, the notation gets a little bit hairy, and so I'm going to rename things. So instead of having eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k, so I just keep saying lambda, 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 I'm going to say maybe there are three eigenvalues, we'll call them alpha, beta, and gamma, so they have different names. And the eigenspaces, instead of calling them vi, I'm going to call them u, v, and w. And the geometric multiplicities, I'm going to call a, b, and c. So we have a plus b plus c equals n, and we want to prove there's an eigenbasis. Well, let's start by finding bases for u, v, and w. And the, de the definition of dimension is the number of elements of the basis. So we're going to have a elements in this basis for u, b elements in this basis for v, and c elements in this basis for w. So these are all eigenvectors, and there are a plus b plus c, which is n of them in total. So our goal will be to show that this is a basis, and then it will be the eigenbasis we want. So the next slide just summarizes what happened on this slide. So here's that notation again, eigenvalues alpha, beta, gamma, eigenspaces u, v, w, geometric multiplicities a, b, c, and a plus b plus c is n. We took bases, u1, u2, ua of u, v1, v2, vb of v, and w1, w2, wc of w. And we wanted to show that if we just listed all those bases together, we would get a basis for all of our n. Now, since a plus b plus c equals n, we have the right number of elements for basis. We just need to check either that it's linearly independent or that it spans. Once we get one, we will have the other for free. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show linear independence. So if A, B, and C, sorry, I'll go back here a sec. If A, B, and C were one, this would be from vector, I think it was 9D, um, that when you have ve eigenvectors for different eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are automatically linearly independent. But here we have repetitions, so we need to work a little harder. So the definition of linear independence is that there are no linear relations. So let's suppose for the sake of contradiction, there is a linear relation like this one. Well, this first part here is going to be an alpha eigenvector because it's a linear combination of alpha eigenvectors. The u's are alpha eigenvectors. And this block over here is going to be a beta eigenvector. And this block over here is going to be a gamma eigenvector for the same reasons. So we have alpha eigenvector plus beta eigenvector plus gamma eigenvector equals zero. In other words, that's a linear relation between these eigenvectors. But going back to vector 9D, the only way that happens is if these eigenvectors are zero. So we deduce that each of these individual things underneath the brace must be zero. So F1, U1 plus blah, 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 plus FA, UA is zero. Next guy is zero again, and so forth. Now, our goal is to get that every single coefficient here is zero, because that's what we need to do to show linear independence. But so far, what I've shown is I've shown that these things are all zero. Keeping going. But the U's are a basis of capital U. They're a basis of the alpha eigenspace. So in particular, they're linearly independent, which means all these coefficients must be zero. In the same way, all these coefficients must be zero, and all these coefficients must be zero. So we have shown that every single coefficient in our linear relation is zero. Which means we showed what we asked for. We showed that these vectors are linearly independent. And let me just repeat why that's what we wanted to do a plus b plus c equals n, so the number of vectors here is the right number of vectors for a basis of Rn. 
Once we show that they're really dependent, we know that they are a basis. QED. Okay. That was, that was the proofs. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed.